Hi, my name is Jason Piechuk. I work as a biological science technician at Zion National Park in the wildlife program. I'm standing here outside of our natural resources building in front of a window, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about birds and some of the issues they face with window collisions. Uh, a little a brief story, uh, a little anecdote of my own. Uh, I live not far from the park in town, and uh, I like having bird feeders. I have a lot of hummingbird feeders. And uh, last, last summer, I was sitting in my living room, and the birds were making nice chirping and singing outside in the yard. And then I heard that thud that I knew meant a bird hit a window. And uh, anyone that has bird feeders, and a lot of people that don't, have probably had a bird thud into a window. And sometimes they bounce off, and they fly away, and they seem like they're probably fine. Other times, sadly, we find a dead bird beneath our window, or we find a pile of feathers where a bird might have been. Uh, and so this is actually uh, doesn't seem like a huge issue when you just find one or two birds in your yard a year. But it turns out, as we've been studying this issue, as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service especially has been studying it in the last few years, it turns out somewhere maybe approaching a billion birds a year are dying from running into our windows. So why do birds run into our windows? So a little bit of background on bird migration. Not everybody uh, realizes that a lot of these songbirds that we see, especially in the summer here in Zion, all the birds that are singing, all the birds that are nesting here in the canyon, um, a, a great number of these birds migrate huge distances to places in Mexico, in Latin America. Uh, some of them go as far south as Chile or Brazil. Uh, so yeah, we have, these, we have birds that travel in incredible distances. And a lot of these birds are flying at nighttime um, and then, of course, we also have birds that are just living their lives. They're looking for food. They're looking for mates. They're picking up nest supplies and they're building nests. They're feeding their chicks and they're going through their whole life here in Zion. Uh, and they're just moving around from tree to tree, from bush to bush. And the problem is that sometimes they fly into glass and sometimes that will uh, injure them and uh, possibly even kill them. And uh, the reason that glass is dangerous to birds is that glass does not exist in nature, certainly not in the way that windows uh, exist around human structures. So I'm standing here in front of this window, and you can probably see in the reflection uh, possibly me, but also you're probably seeing some of the green leaves of the cottonwood trees. You're seeing some of the red rock sandstone of our beautiful geologic formations. And you're also seeing the blue sky. And to us as people, when we see a window, we have a lot of cues. We're walking on a deck, we're walking on a sidewalk, we're walking into a building. We expect that glass is going to be reflective and we don't get too confused by it. Although if you do some searching online, you'll probably find videos of people clumsily stumbling into windows and doors, screen doors all the time. Um, but birds, of course, don't know those cues. They don't understand how buildings work and how glass windows work. And so if they're distracted, if they're just feeding and moving from tree to tree, they might look into this window, see the reflection of the leaves, and think they're flying into a safe place where they can perch up in a tree or go into the sky. So a lot of people have seen on the internet, on the news, uh, there are sometimes stories a couple times a year where a bunch of birds have run into a skyscraper or have, you know, have died in some terrible tragedy. And those kind of things do make the news because so many birds can be injured or killed at once. But uh, if you look across our, our entire nation, um, we have millions of homes, millions of smaller buildings that are not skyscrapers, you know, one and two story buildings. And if each of those has a dozen windows or more, and if one bird flies into those windows once a year, you can start to do the math and you realize we get to that one billion uh, rather quickly. Um, and here in the Park Service, somewhat uniquely, uh, we try to build our buildings and design our landscaping around them to fit into the, the nature of each park uh, individually. And so a lot of our buildings will be kind of hidden into the landscape. So it makes them a lot more pleasant for us humans to look at them and, and not feel like we're going into a, suddenly into a development in the middle of a national park. But for the birds and different wildlife that lives in our national parks, it also hides those buildings from them and can make them potentially a little bit more dangerous. So if you look at the window I'm standing in front of, you might actually see some silhouettes of birds that people have put up stuck uh, with tape to the inside of these windows. And this is actually a pretty common thing for people to do uh, at their homes when they have a lot of birds striking their windows. A lot of people that have bird feeders will put these up. And it seems like it's a good idea, but 
first off, these are inside the window. And so from the camera or from, the, you know, on your screens, you may see uh, that even though we can, we know that there's a bird sticker inside this window, you can actually see reflections in front of it. And as the sky moves around in, or as the sun moves around in the sky, it'll light up various different things. And the reflections on this glass will change throughout the day. And so there will be times where this bird silhouette is completely invisible. So, um, so at the very least, we need to make sure that we're putting things on the outside of the glass to make them safer for birds. And so we're going to show you a few, uh, a few uh, examples of things you could do with your windows here on our natural resources building. Okay, so we've moved to the next window here in our natural resources building. And as you can see, a lot of the similar reflections are in this window as we're in the last one. You could probably see the sky. You can see the green foliage on our trees. You can probably see some of the geologic formations off in the distance. Um, but the difference with this window that you may be able to notice is it's now covered in these white dots. And these small white dots are just a simple decal type of product. Um, the, uh, they reflect a little bit of light, which is why we can see them. They're also reflective in the UV part of the spectrum where birds can also, most birds can see, uh, which gives them a little bit of an advantage over us in detecting this. And basically all it does is it disrupts the scene. So instead of just seeing safe habitat where they can fly into, they're now seeing that there may be something weird here and they don't want to fly into it. So hopefully this protects some number of birds that otherwise may have just crashed into this thinking they were flying into a tree. And a lot of this kind of stuff has been researched in the last few years all over the world. Um, people have set up these elaborate test sites where they have basically a wind tunnel and they release birds into one end of it and they fly towards untreated glass and then glass that has various treatments like what you're seeing here. Um, a lot of this research has actually been put together and there have uh, there've been reports that we've been using uh, in the Park Service. Um, for example, uh, one reference I've used uh, is the American Bird Conservancy. They've put together all sorts of reports on these various products and other things you can do to protect birds in and around your home and business. Um, the funding for a lot of this has come through generous contributions from our partner nonprofit organization, the Zion Forever Project. Uh, they've helped uh, get this kind of piloted and we're hoping to expand this park-wide over the next couple of years. And of course, um, this is the kind of thing that most people can easily do at their home or business. If you have um, windows at your home, especially if you have a bird feeder or you like to have hummingbird feeders like I do, and you occasionally have birds thumping into them, hopefully they, don't, they aren't dying. Uh, but uh, even if they're not dying, it's uh, probably not a pleasant thing for them. Um, and uh, this is something that is fairly uh, affordable and fairly simple to do um, and uh, if you have um, you know in my home we have not only we have bird feeders but we also have some landscaping that's there to attract various kinds of birds we have flowers and things that the birds like to use for cover and that's the kind of stuff that brings those birds closer to us so we can enjoy them more but of course can also bring them closer to the danger so if you'd like to learn more about this uh, this whole issue there are tons of resources online with some simple searching Fish and Wildlife Service has done a lot of compiling of reports and statistics on this kind of thing. And, uh, and there are tons of solutions out there that are uh, currently being rolled out and that you should look into. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I look forward to seeing you in Zion National Park sometime soon.